Rehab short for rehabilitation. Um, to peel the onion, what are we rehabilitating? Well, drugs serve as a synthetic coping skill. Um, there are four primary emotions. Mad, glad, scared, and sad. Sadness, melancholy, depressed mood. Um, scared, which is fear, okay? Forget everything and run. Uh, there is um, a glad, which is happiness or contentment. And then there's mad, which is anger, right? And being able to regulate one's emotions. Um, when young people introduce synthetic coping skills like marijuana, like alcohol, like prescription medication, like uh, Vicodin, uh, Clonopin, Xanax, a host of pharmaceuticals, um, oftentimes as they're developing through adolescence, they are prescribing to themselves, it's called self-medication, a pill or a powder or a bud or a potion for just about every emotion they have on the spectrum. Now of those four, there's thousands of emotions. Uh, could you imagine every time that I was uh, sad, I took a Vicodin or a, sh or a shot of heroin, which is a painkiller, numbing my pain. Every time I was uh, insecure with myself, I did a shot of vodka. Every time I wanted to socialize with people, I needed to smoke marijuana and maybe medical marijuana at that, right? No judgment. Uh, and every time that I wanted to uh, uh, quell my fear, I took a handful of Xanax. So when we talk about rehabilitation, um, people get into this uh, cycle of medicating a whole host of human emotions. And what they deny themselves is the opportunity to learn healthy coping skills. And this is something that we know as adults. Young people uh, in an ideal development are supposed to develop coping skills as life gets more challenging as we get older. And certainly, the academic challenges are different from junior high school to high school, certainly from high school to college or maybe even beyond. Uh, for those who go to high school for vocational, some of the pressures are very real. And maybe in 2015, maybe every generation says it's maybe more challenging now than ever before. So when we talk about rehabilitation, it's introducing healthier coping skills, um, learning to identify what the emotional spectrum is, um, that there are healthier ways to communicate, I'm scared, like fear than maybe breaking chairs or putting fists through walls. Um, to be able to identify and recognize that, you know what, I, I, I do experience some kind of anger, and maybe it has to do with some childhood experiences. I mean, let's face it, none of us had the perfect childhood. Um, maybe some of us came close, maybe some of us were a mile away. But being able to put into perspective, um, I am here now, and as I grow up, what path do I want to choose, and how am I going to deal with life's challenges? So what when we talk about rehabilitation, we're really rehabilitating the self. For adolescents, they've never really given themselves the opportunity because they've been medicating maybe with alcohol and marijuana from 12, 13, 14, 15. We're seeing young people enter rehab programs at younger ages we've never before seen at 16, 17, 18, early 20s. These are still in the thick of what's called adolescence. Adolescence is that really challenging middle area. You're not a boy or girl anymore. Societally, you're not really accepted as a well-adjusted adult male or female. You're right in that middle area. And that middle area brings a lot of challenges. So learning healthy coping skills, what are those healthy coping skills? Exercise, greatest reducer of stress out there. Uh, communication, being able to communicate to someone. Let's take the expression of anger. I could look at, at, at you as a, maybe a friend or maybe a parent or maybe a coworker and say, when you say those things, it makes me very angry. That's an expression of anger. Or I could pick up this chair and throw it through that window. That's another expression of anger that brings consequences. Um, and of course, people try to avoid the latter by medicating it so they don't have these outbursts. So really important to have a knowledge of the emotional spectrum. And there are what we call in the field evidence-based practices in working with people who have substance use issues. There's what's called cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. That is a practice that they use in rehab or in rehabilitation centers. What are cognitions? Cognitions are thoughts. If I can have more control of my thoughts, I can have greater influence over my, be my behavior. Okay? Um, the heroin addict who's in the throes of this obsession and compulsion, he doesn't wake up with a bundle in his pocket and a needle in his arm. It all starts with a thought. I'm bored. I'm upset. Uh, I'm in pain. Um, I feel I have low self-esteem, although it doesn't present like that. It basically presents as uh, uh, being disgruntled or what they call irritable and discontented at the world. Uh, and of course, then of course that individual gets up based on these thoughts that are happening sub or unconsciously, and they go out and they score their drug of choice for self-medication. So when we talk about CBT and rehab, learning to have more control over our thoughts, they say feelings aren't facts. 
I think most human beings would agree that when those feelings are happening, they sure feel like facts. But learning that emotions don't kill us, so to speak. Unfortunately, behaviors do, oftentimes. Um, uh, there's, there's no consequences for a thought. There are for behaviors. And the two are very closely interlinked. Okay, if you can have more control over your thoughts, then you have greater influence over your feelings and emotional state, and emotional states often dictate behavior. This gets complicated, but um, also you're taking someone out of um, what potentially could be a polluted environment. I mean, that's one of the things that we've always spoken out against, that New York State needs to do better in supporting young people and older people, frankly, who are in recovery, particularly early recovery. We take them out of schools. Now, we have great school systems here on Long Island, but we take them out of schools where they meet their friends and score drugs and use, and then we put them in rehab, maybe for one, two, or three weeks, and we put them right back in the same schools with the same social group, in the same dysfunctional family, maybe, and we expect all this change. Um, there is no magic within the four walls of a rehabilitation center. Ultimately, for a week, two weeks, as long as we can get uh, uh, approved by insurance companies, and we're hoping with new laws that that will change, but it used to be 28 days with standard in, inpatient for rehab. It's 28 days for that individual to learn new coping skills, have a better understanding, hopefully what we call insight into self, both my external self and my emotional self, and learn to have a greater relationship with my thoughts that influence behavior. Okay? And of course, to build a healthy support network. Uh, that's really, really important. And uh, uh, self-help is thriving on Long Island. There are more young people entering self-help fellowships uh, than ever before. Um, and there is more light on addiction and more, I think, community and universal support for helping people. But inpatient, I think, is a 30-day head start for individuals to lay a foundation to get some evidence-based treatment. And we know more about addiction treatment than ever before. When we talk about evidence-based, it's been studied over time to work. And I think that's really, really important.